Just Bro, Tupac is alive. Like, <laughs> I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the One to Know podcast. I'm Joel Haas. I'm Lexi Linderman. And I'm Avery Hill. Today, we'll be previewing Penn State's upcoming matchup against Wisconsin with a pretty narrow spread. Should be maybe a closer game than a lot of people were anticipating. Uh, we'll also talk about the best kickoff times in light of some recent events. But to start this one off, um, Penn State returns from its bye week looking to go, looking to advance to 7-0 and um, against a 5-2 and Wisconsin squad. What are you guys looking forward to in that matchup? I think the thing that I'm looking forward to the most is to see whether Penn State's run defense is really good enough to compete with teams like Ohio State. I mean, against UCLA and USC, it kind of seemed like a problem, especially against USC. I mean, Woody Marks and the Trojans just ran all over them. I think they had like 189 yards on the ground. That's just kind of unheard of from Penn State defenses. I mean, they're supposed to be these elite physical defenses that thrive in the trenches, and it's just, we're just, we just did not see that. Uh, their past two games, but like they have a big task ahead with Wisconsin. I mean, they're averaging 194 yards a game on the ground. I mean, Tywee Walker is a pretty good running back. I mean, he had to step up when uh, their head back was forced to medically retire at the beginning of the season, uh, and he's done a good job. I don't know how much of it is him being good and just Wisconsin having a great struck, like a great O line and a great run game structure. But I think that. You know, the run game on both sides of the ball is going to be crucial for this game. I think Nick Singleton and Kaytron Allen need to have a big game for Penn State. Um, And I just think Penn State's defense needs to be able to stop the run. It's as simple as that. I mean, I don't think think Braden Locke's going to be able to beat Penn State through the air at all. I think they really just need to hone in on the run. But we'll see if they can do that. Yeah, I mean, going off of that, I mean, I do agree. I think that the run game on both sides will be crucial. I mean, getting Nick Singleton and Catron Allen going will be big. Uh, getting to Wee Walker going will be big. I mean, he has, what, eight touchdowns in the last four games. Obviously didn't do much before because Tyler Van Dyke was the quarterback. Whole different offense. They've kind of changed things. They've gone back to the old ways. I mean, it kind of feels like an... You know, the the usual Penn State-Wisconsin matchup, just great running backs on both sides. I mean, if you look in the past, I mean, James White, Monty Ball, uh, Melvin Gordon, like there's been Jonathan Taylor, of course. There's been great backs to play. And, of course, Saquon Barkley and Miles Sanders for Penn State. But there's been great backs to play, so I think that'll be a big thing. And I also just think that, um, you know, playing in Camp Randall Stadium will be a big thing. I mean, if you look at it, like Camp Randall Stadium, I mean, unless you're pre pre beating Georgia, Alabama, like it, it's a hard place to play, and I mean they've been rolling now. I mean I think again I think that Wisconsin team is a total different team, so it'll be interesting to see how Penn State does because I mean you looked at them at USC and they started slow. I mean they they recovered, but I mean Camp Randall is easily a harder stadium to play in than USC, so I think you know that'll be a big thing to look out for. Yeah, I think it's the toughest atmosphere that Penn State's seen so far for sure. Yeah. I think West Virginia was supposed to be that, and then it didn't really live up to expectations. The rain delay, everyone kind of fizzled out. USC, students were on break. There was a lot of white in that crowd. It really was not the atmosphere that I think many were expecting. So it's definitely going to be a huge task for them. I mean, we heard the jump around being blasted at practice yesterday. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's definitely the toughest environment they're going to see um, so far this season. Yeah, it's interesting because it feels like, at least to me this season, every time Penn State plays a power conference team, um, it's it instantly becomes like the toughest game of the season. Like <laughs> heading into West Virginia, <laughs> you know, heading into West Virginia, everyone was hyping it up. A lot of people were putting Penn State on upset watch, and then they did like their gold out. You know, they had the the all the stands wearing wearing the it was yellow, it was not gold, but they had the the yellow out. Um, you know, it was supposed to be a hostile environment. We we kind of saw what happened, you know, during the rain delay and everything yeah. like that. And Penn State took care of business. And then, um, you know, you move past that and you get to the Illinois game and all of a sudden Illinois is ranked and James Franklin wants whiteout energy. And all of a sudden that's, you know, a big marquee ranked matchup at night. And, you know, that's all of a sudden a tough test for Penn State that, you know, they obviously come out on top of. Um, I don't really count UCLA as a, a power conference opponent <laughs> at this point, just based on based on the state of that program right now. But mm-hmm. you know, that's and then, little bro, that's all. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they could they could be in the MAC for for all we care. Yeah. But and then you go to you know the USC game where you're traveling across the country, and we saw the stats about how bad teams were when they go across the country. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we know USC, despite you know sitting at three and four right now, is is still a very talented team. Um, on paper with, you know, a great coaching staff. And obviously that was a tough game that went into overtime. So it feels like, 
you know, every time Penn State, you know, gets into game week, it feels like all of a sudden their opponent is, you know, playing really well, or it's all of a sudden some <laughs> big challenge for Penn State that at the beginning of the season you weren't necessarily expecting it to be. Um, so, I mean, where do you guys kind of rank this Wisconsin game in terms of difficulty compared to Penn State's other games this season? I think I would go as second most difficult. I think with Illinois, they had the home atmosphere. They were supposed to, you know, take care of business, and they absolutely dominated Illinois. USC, I think what it was the hardest up to this point just because of the talent that team has, the cross-country travel. Of, it was their first time traveling cross-country. I mean, teams were 1-8 and eight switching time zones before that game. So I think that still would be the toughest so far, but I think Wisconsin ranked second. I mean, this is kind of one of the games that we circled as a trap game heading into the season anyway, along with USC. And I think that Franklin has historically been bad coming out of the bye. And I think that that is gonna, is, plays a huge role in how tough – uh, this game is going to be for Penn State. Uh, I think, especially with the slow starts that have been happening, they had a week off. I mean, they we don't really know if they fix that. We'll find out on Saturday. But so I think I would rank it second in terms of the tough games they've had this year, just because of you know coming out of the bye week. This Wisconsin team's on a three-game winning streak. They have all the momentum. I mean, they've put up over 40 in two of their last three games. They they they're confident, and I think uh, Penn State you know has that confidence. But they also haven't played a game. In a week, uh, in two weeks. So, you know, we'll just have to see. But I think that for sure it would be behind USC. Yeah. I mean, I think I agree. I think it's behind USC, but I do think it's close. I mean, as you said, Wisconsin's hot. I think as the season goes, like looking ahead to the Wisconsin game, like the stakes kind of change. Like at first, like, oh, okay, they're okay. And then they get blown up by Alabama. They're like, oh, okay, it's nothing. And then, of course, they go on a roll. So it's like, oh, okay, they're better and they're playing at Camp Randall. But I do think that USC is the hardest game. But, I mean, it does make sense because I think for me, even going into the season, like even looking back at when the first schedule dropped and we knew like what the lineup was, like I was looking at the schedule and I'm like, okay, you got to go. U- UCLA was, okay, you know, I didn't know what they would be at that time. Now, you know, with Chip Kelly gone and everything, take that off. But, you know, USC, Washington, Ohio State, um, like that's that's a tough stretch to go through in a season. So, I mean, I think it does make sense that every week everyone's like, okay, this is the biggest game because, I mean, that's kind of exactly what they signed up for. Not that, you know, they had too much of a choice, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think Penn State got kind of lucky having that, that bye week right there kind of to break yeah. up this stretch of games, especially with two road games to – pretty far places um you know wisconsin obviously isn't on the west coast but it's still a pretty long trip that we're gonna have to make um so please pray for us there um hopefully our our minivan can make it but um no i think this this wisconsin team is really intriguing to me just because you know you guys kind of touched on it already but just you look at how they've played through their schedule so far they got through the non-conference and and they had you know the blowout lost alabama where tyler van dyke goes down um, and at that point, I think a lot of people just wrote them off and were like, okay, you know, this is kind of a lost season for Wisconsin. And, and obviously, Ches Malusi with the medical retirement, one of their best players, yeah. um, goes down. And then you're kind of like, okay, you know, maybe they'll be kind of battling for a bowl game, you know, somewhere in the middle of the Big Ten. But I think they've really rallied um, with with Braden Locke at the helm. And, and they've definitely switched what they've done offensively. It's kind of funny because... Um, when Luke Fickle came in from Cincinnati, he wanted to change everything up. Yeah. Um, obviously, he's more of a, you know, a pass-first guy, spread offense, um, a little more up-tempo compared to what Wisconsin is typically known for um, with their, their you know, heavy run attack that we, that we touched on. And, and he kind of came in and tried to change things up. Um, didn't work too well last year. I think they finished 7-6 and six last year. Uh, lost to LSU, I believe, in the bowl game. Um, and then to start off this year, obviously they were two and two at the very beginning and it kind of wasn't working. And then all of a sudden Braden Locke comes in and, and, you know, uh, Chisholm Lucy goes down. So they go to Toby Walker and they, they kind of had to change their, their philosophy offensively. And I think it's, it's been for the better. I mean, yeah. they've outscored their opponents 117 to 16 in the last three games. I think they've been a much better team with, with kind of the backups in there, um, an offense, which is really interesting. Um, and that obviously makes it more difficult for Penn State to, to you know, watch the film and, and really understand what you're getting from this Wisconsin team because they definitely look a lot different now in, in week eight than they did in week one. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see. But then again, these three, you know, big blowout wins are what Rutgers, Purdue, like it's not, you know, teams that, that are really going to pose much of a threat. It's kind of the bottom dwellers in the Big Ten. So Wisconsin, you know, hasn't really faced a team like Penn State. And also we've seen from Locke that, He's kind of had some turnover issues with yeah. mm-hmm. interceptions, things like that, and that's something that Penn State can probably take advantage of. But I, I think turnovers will be a big deal in this one for both sides. I mean, yeah. Drew obviously threw three against USC. 
two if you you know take away the the hail mary, which I don't think anyone really counts. But regardless, um, both quarterbacks you know have at times kind of struggled with turnovers, and and I think you know this is a game that's supposed to be tight. The spread I was kind of surprised um, when I first saw it, but you know the more I looked into it, the more it kind of made sense. I thought you know six and a half was a little bit of a short spread, but you know considering it's number three team in the country, yeah. it's an unranked squad. But the more you look into that, the more you kind of realize okay, you know th- this should be a pretty tight game. Um, and I think all of our score predictions kind of reflected that. Um, but I do I do think, you know, in a tight game like that, turnovers are going to be key. You know, whoever can get more possessions and, and things like that. And we obviously touched on, you know, kind of the atmosphere that Wisconsin has with, you know, jump around and, and everything like that. And obviously it being a night game, you know, they should be pretty rowdy. They should be ready to go for that one. Um, they're hyped up because, you know, obviously – they're they're not gonna you know host a top three team very often, um, and to get that for a night game for a team that's playing really hot right now, a team that's rolling, um, technically still in the the playoff race. I mean, you know if if they win out, they're probably in that conversation. So yeah. they still have you know something to play for at this point. Um, I think it's gonna be a really tough environment for for Penn State to go into, and and obviously the most hostile environment that they've played in all season. So I think it'll be a big test for for Penn State. Yeah. And I mean, I think one more thing, like I think that one thing that Penn State defense, like I think they'll be able to kind of load the box, which would be something interesting to see. I mean, I think you look at Jalen Reed as a guy that could easily get, you know, maybe eight, nine, ten tackles, especially if he moves into the line. I know sometimes he kind of swaps back to the line sometimes. So if he's able to move to the line and I think he can, I mean, I don't think they need as much, you know, defensive back personnel. I mean, I think, you know. Wisconsin's going to run play action and everything, but I mean, I think Jalen Reed will be, you know, well equipped to be closer to the line of scrimmage. So I think it'll be a big opportunity for them to kind of load the box and maybe make plays, get that production that they need, even if it's not sacks, maybe in tackles for loss, things like that. So I think that'll be a big factor going into the game. Yeah, and I think, like Joel said, the turnovers are going to be huge. I mean, I think that, you know, Wisconsin's passing game isn't like that hard to read I would say just yeah. because it's so much mm-hmm. play action that I think a lot of it is like short stuff to yeah. screen stuff yeah. like that like I think yeah. Penn State has shown they can make the adjustments needed and I mean there was that what that AJ Harris interception against Illinois where they saw the same play earlier AJ Harris knew it was coming was able to pick that ball I think we could see something like that against Wisconsin especially because Lockett's sort of interception in every game he started so yeah. I think I definitely think that trend continues on Saturday we'll just see how much of a difference that's going to make but I think it could make all the difference in the world honestly yeah, it really just comes down to, you know, can you stop the run? Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more play action than, than Penn State's seen this season, and, and you kind of have to, you know, watch out in case uh, Lark decides to pull to pull the ball and pass. Obviously, you have to be ready. You can't be asleep at the wheel if you're, you know, in the Penn State secondary, but for the most part, it's going to be runs, and it's just going to be about, you know, sound tackling, not letting them, you know, get through, you know, two big gaps, things like that. Um, Penn State's defensive line obviously was praised heading into the season, throughout the season, you know, they'll be put to the test here. I think the linebackers, it'll be key for them. You know, they can't be missing assignments. They can't be hitting the wrong gaps and things like that and and giving up too many yards to Wisconsin because, you know, Wisconsin's going to be bleeding the clock just based on kind of their play style of running the ball. And if you fall behind, you know, you won't have a lot of time to come back. And and once that, you know, if if Wisconsin gets an early lead, that just ramps up the crowd, you know, another notch and just going to get, you know, a lot more harder for Penn State. So you want to kind of try and take Wisconsin out of the game early if you get a chance to do so. And then Wisconsin probably isn't really built to come back uh, from a big deficit. So I think the key is also just kind of starting fast for Penn State. Um, But this game, night game, 7.30 kick, 6.30 local, um, but 7.30 Eastern. Um, And and then next week, Penn State will host Ohio State, which big noon kick, um, which I know (laughs) everyone loves. Um, But I'll turn it to you guys first. What what kickoff time do you think is is the best from, from your perspective? I mean, for me, I think the best kickoff time is 7.30. I mean, you think about it, obviously, for, you know, being, you know, with Penn State, covering Penn State, I guess it's kind of a biased perspective. I think, I think you know, for Wisconsin, I would say noon. Like, I think their noon kickoff is the best thing they have. But for Penn State, I mean, I think that 7.30 kick, of course, you get, you know, the whole day, especially for players, you know, kind of get ready. Then you play. It's a night game. Of course, the atmosphere, I mean, looking at when you can have your whiteouts. I mean, Ohio State would easily be a whiteout if it was a night game so I mean I think 730 is the best kick when you just think about kind of I guess all parties involved so yeah I'm gonna go with noon kind of controversial Ooh. um and that's kind of like a journalistic <laughs> perspective uh because then I'm home by like six o'clock which is great that's um true. but that's true. I will say I think a noon kick is better for teams on the road, like when Penn State goes on the road, I think they're wanting those noon kicks. And we saw we saw the effect it had with West Virginia. The crowd was nearly not 
was not nearly what we were expecting. Um, but I think it can bite home teams in the butt too, like with Ohio State being a noon kick and with Donald Trump reportedly coming to town and the traffic there. Yeah. I mean, oh, we terrible. saw with UCLA, oh, the students, <laughs> the student section <laughs> was just not full until like five, ten minutes into the first quarter. And against opponents like Ohio State, they kind of want to have that advantage. And so I think, you know, there are some problems with the noon kick. And, you know, people on Twitter do not like the noon kick. They say big noon kickoff is ruining college football, whatever. But I think, you know, it has its pros, it has its cons. But I think that, you know, afternoon college football is just elite. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's what, that's what I want to yeah. see. Yeah, I mean, I think from, like, the journalist perspective, I think noon kick is kind of the obvious answer there just because – you know, you get through the game, it's whatever, 3 p.m., then you have to go to Franklin's press conference and he's going to take, you know, half an hour to show up and then you have to talk to the players after that and then go on the field and record your post-game video and then go back up and write your story. And by the time you're done, it's whatever, 7 p.m., you can go home, catch the night games, things like that. Whereas, you know, if it's a 7, 7.30 kick, you're not getting home till whatever, 1 a.m. Um, so selfishly, like, I think, yeah, probably 12 for from a journalist's perspective is the best. I think I'm going to split you guys and go with 3.30. I think it's the best kickoff time. Um, I think it gives you some time earlier in the day to kind of watch those noon games and kind of soak in college football, get in the zone, you know what I mean? And and then obviously during the game, it starts, you know, the sun's up, things like that. But especially in, you know, October, November, December, the sun starts to set and then it kind of turns into a night game. You get a nice sunset kind of depending on the stadium. You could get some really cool views there. Um, and then, you know, the game ends and, and you can still get home at, at a reasonable hour. You might be able to catch, you know, Boise State. Uh, you might be able to catch Ashton Genty running for, for 200 yards if, if you can make it home in time. But uh, I don't know. I think 330 kick is probably, probably the way to go, um, in my opinion. Yeah. But. I mean, I th- and I also, can we just talk about the worst kickoff time? And, of course, we don't have to deal with it a lot, but if Penn State ever has to play on the West Coast and they say, yeah, we're going to throw you that 10 o'clock game, <sighs> like, I, I might just call call out sick, like, I, cause that, that like come on, like it it'll be like five a.m. my like say I don't go to the game, it'll be five a.m. my time before I even finish everything. Say I do go to the game, I'll still be tired. Like I, I just I has a ten o'clock kick. Like I don't know. It's just obviously it's because they're on the west coast and everything, but still it's just the, just the worst time. I can never catch a former Pac-12 team game or anything like that. It's I'm not staying up for that. <laughs> What are we at on time? All right. We can round it out by giving our score predictions for the game. Um, obviously, Vegas expects it to be a close game, six and a half point spread. Talked a little bit about that earlier. Um, I have Penn State winning this one, 27 23, but what about you guys? Um, I have Penn State winning 21 17. I mean, I think it'll be a close game until the end. I do think, again, Penn State will start out slow, but I think that third quarter will help. The only thing that I'm looking out for is that in between third and fourth quarter jump around. We'll see how that changes things. But yeah, that, I think 21 17 Penn State. I've got 24 14 Penn State. I think Wisconsin's rushing attack kind of does well in the first half, but Penn State puts a stop to that as the game gets deeper. Um, yeah, and so I have Penn State winning by 10. All right. There you have it, folks. Um, last episode, we promised that if we got enough likes, we would have Lyle freestyle a rap about Penn State football. Uh, he asked for 40, so we unfortunately fell short of that goal. Um, there will be more chances in the future uh, to get Lyle to rap. Don't worry. It, it will happen. Um, but we can give you Lyle's dog of the week uh, for this week. So, Lyle, if you want to take it away. <laughs> Yeah, so obviously no Penn State game this past weekend, so we've got a different dog of the week. But this one is going to go to Will Linderman, uh, Lexi's dad, um, for having a breakout performance in his golf tournament this past weekend. He might not have won the whole thing, but I thought he exemplified a lot of determination and grit out there, and that's why he's going to be the second ever dog of the week. Participation matters. Shout out to Mr. Linderman. Let's get him a trophy. All right, thanks, Lyle. Anytime. anytime. Have fun at dinner. (laughs) Okay, bye. That's it for today's episode. Thank you guys for watching. For more football coverage, you can find us at psucollision.com and follow us on socials. Peace.